Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, and welcome to our third and final webinar in our series devoted to COBOL. My name is Jeff Wood, and I'm one of the engineers here at Faircom. I will be your MC today. Today's webinar will focus on real-time analytics on COBOL data. If you happen to miss out our first two webinars, the first one talking about eliminating data corruption and implementing high availability disaster recovery strategies, and our second webinar concerning modernizing your COBOL applications, have no fear. For a link to all three will be emailed out to you at the end of this webinar. While we wait for other participants to join us, we have three quick poll questions for you. These will help us better understand you and your COBOL. The first one you should see in front of you is talking about your job title. You a manager, developer, architect, system admin, end user, other? While we wait for the votes to come in, I would like to share a fun fact with you. Studies suggest COBOL is easier to learn and easier to maintain than any other modern language. That's awesome. Uh, let's close that poll out and jump into the second one. And the second poll, actually, we want to know, how do you how are you currently extracting your data from your COBOL files for your business intelligence analytics today? And if so, how long does it take you to do it? Anywhere from a day, two days, one day? How long is your data available? I don't know. Please answer one of the questions there in front of you. And while we wait for those votes to come on in, another fun fact, more than 70% of business processing systems run COBOL. Wow, that's amazing. More than 70%. People definitely need that analytics, right? All right, let's close that poll. Let's jump into the third one. And the third poll today talks about, are you currently using any SQL connectors to your COBOL data files? Maybe, maybe not. No or yes. You have three different choices there for the yes. So please pick one that best meets your situation. And the last fun fact for today is, on the Tyobi or the importance of being earnest index of popular computer languages, COBOL has never been outside of the top 30. Wow, still holding strong. That's awesome. All right, let's close that poll. And let's take a quick look at the results just to see who's in the crowd and how you guys are actually using your COBOL. So that, let's share the first results. All right, awesome. A lot of developers and architects. That's amazing. We love that. Let's hide those results and go to the second one. Are you actually using COBOL analytics? Oh, yeah, great. A lot of you are in real time. Sweet. That's good. All right, let's hide those results and go with the third one here. See if you're actually using any type of SQL interface. Oh, relational databases, that's cool. Good deal. All right, let's close that out. All right, now let's see how CTRTG can help you seamlessly access your COBOL data and provide you with real-time analytics without any changes to your COBOL debt code. To help show us how this is possible, I'd like to introduce our Director of Business Development, Evaldo Oliveira, and our Director of Client Services, Joe Darnell. We'll start out with a presentation followed by a live demo and we'll close out highlighting a couple of great questions from the audience we would like to share with everyone. But before we jump in, there are a few housekeeping items. We encourage you to ask us any questions throughout the session. You can submit them in the chat box portion of the GoToWebinar. We'll do our best to answer them as they come. And Evaldo and Joe will pick up some of the most critical ones on the final Q&A session. But don't worry, we will answer all of them via email after the webinar. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be emailed out so you can have access to it at your leisure. All right, I think that covers the basics. Let's check out our C-Tree RTG real-time data analytics. Show me the data, Valdo and Joe. Show me the data. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thanks. Holy cobalt, day three. Day three, yeah. Yeah, this is great. Thanks for everybody joining us today. Uh, today, like Jeff said, we're going to talk about real-time data analytics. I'm Joe. This is my colleague, Valdo. And today, on the agenda, we're going to talk about the Fair, a brief Faircom overview, C-Tree RTG product review. Of all those, going to take you through a live demonstration to prove that it's not just clickbait, and then supported platforms for the C-Tree RTG, and followed by a bunch of free stuff, including a free shirt, free download of the software, and a free proof of concept. Now, Faircom. Faircom is based in the U.S. with offices in Europe and South America. It's 40 years old this year. That's pretty impressive. That's 40 years of delivering high performance database technology for missing critical applications with little to no database administration. Now we have lots of customers that have used uh, C-Tree over the years. You and I have been in, in and out of a lot of these guys and it's impressive every time we go see them. You know, one of the ones that comes to mind today is the fact that for the last 25 years with Motorola Solutions, 
we've sat in emergency dispatch units. These are people that you leverage our ISAM technology and asset compliant data that's reliable at their fingertips, especially when lives are on the line. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it is, Joe. And you can see like from all the customers you see over here, this is a small sample of, of the customers Faircom has around the world, but they all have something in common. They all are running mission critical applications with our technology, with our database, uh, C3As. So you see like the, how do they take advantage of the, of the, of that the technology is mainly because we deliver a high performance uh, database that runs everything very record oriented. It's designed for mission critical. So I would like to highlight, for example, Beaver Street Fisheries is like one of the largest seafood distributor here in the US. Um, they use our technology for one of their internal systems. So there are many, many of these customers using us for many, many years um, with a reliable environment and mainly because of performance and high availability. A lot of that, Joe, speaks really to, to, to the fact of how COBOL, why COBOL is so successful, has been so successful for so, so, for so many years. So it's not a coincidence that we, that we have a solution for COBOL as well. Yeah, the fact that COBOL is still in, in thousands of mission critical systems worldwide, it's not going away. That drives a lot of business pressures. And today, one of the focuses is the real-time data analytics. Um, so some of that pressure is right away comes to mind is no access to live data. Yeah, during the whole series of webinars, Joe, we've been talking a lot about uh, change the focus from from the COBOL language and move the focus to the data, right? That you have you know, that you have under COBOL, and we strongly believe that that changes everything for for you from your perspective because it makes first COBOL language is not a big problem by by itself. The challenge is really the fact that the data is really hard to manage and to be accessible. Like in this case here, uh, I'm sure many of the of people from the audience here, they struggle to read the data from COBOL uh, in, uh, live, like in real time. How can, you call, how can you access the data sitting inside proprietary data formats like COBOL usually has um, without having to extract the data first, transform the data into something that is more accessible? So yeah, absolutely, that's a big problem right now. Everybody wants to have the data right away. And we see people with long batch ETL operations. Yeah, what happens is that because you cannot just go straight to the data and read it because of the kind of format that the data is stored under COBOL, the only alternative is let me run some process that extract the data and put it in a more accessible format. But you cannot do this really in real time live with the, with the COBOL applications running because the files are open. So what we have seen customers, they end up having to run this during the night or during a time, a downtime moment where they run big batch operations, trying to extract as much as possible and put in a safe repository so they can manipulate this later. Seems like COBOL seems to be the exception to the rule and not a normal, there's no good integration options. Well, yeah, that would not be a big problem if you had other ways to connect to the data, right? If it was different way, like if you take your CRM, for example, or your ERP, and somehow it is able to read the data straight from COBOL, but that's also not the case. Uh, in the end, what happens is that the data is very proprietary. You don't have easy ways to access the data. So when, when you think about how can I plug my BI tools or my reports tools straight to the data and see what's going on live while it's happening, um, there's simply no good options, right? So that, yeah, that's a big challenge. So they have all this data, they, they can't mine the data, and then what happens? What happens is that the bottom line here is that it takes a lot of time to get this the information that you're trying to extract out of your data. So the data itself, it's not it's just part of the problem because what you really want to do is be able to extract some information to bring it to your decision makers. Um, this is usually done using some kind of analytics or some kind of uh, BI tool. Uh, the bottom line here is that this takes a long time to get this all the way up to the chain. Like we had customers telling us that uh, the, it was taking them two to three days to be able to bring this uh, extract information out of COBOL, uh, process it properly so it could be imported inside a data warehouse or inside the BI tool, and then finally be able to run the, the BI hypercubes, you know, and the queries that you want to run. This is just unacceptable in these days, right? You want you want a decision fast. Uh, yeah, we definitely do. I think it also poses lots of business challenges. A lot of our customers, they get tasked, the management gets tasked with modernizing their applications. And, and like we just talked about having access to the data. And they're like, well, go ahead and do it. Well, what's the first thing they usually do? Yeah, the, the, the way they address this problem usually is try to think, well, COBOL is a problem, right? So why don't we, why don't we just try to rewrite the application? Huh? Just do something, throw it all away and write a new one. I have seen many customers trying this route. Uh, it's highly, it's very risky huh? because you, you're essentially throwing away decades of, of business logic that are tested and are working. 
uh, it's very expensive because you have to hire hundreds of people to rewrite the application, test it again, you know, and do it all. And in many cases, it fails in the end. So I don't think I don't think even though you can think that you can imagine that well the problem has to do with COBOL if I modernize it by rewriting the application this problem goes away it is true it would go it would it would go away but you're gonna bring new problems to the table like stability of your new system so nope not a good way to go seems like a lot of unknowns there it is yes uh -huh. but what about porting it though yeah porting just just moving the application from one platform to another one. Um, it might help you at some level, but not really to give you uh, uh, an easy way to access the data. Sometimes you might try to think about, well, maybe what if I separate the files from the server where the applications are running and maybe port the files to a different folder. The problem is still there. It's still proprietary data. It's not easy for you to access that. You will have to try to combine them with some other hardware alternatives, like, for example, disk replication. So you have a a copy of your data files, but the files are still open. So there's so many different problems here that even by just porting the application, you're not going to solve your uh, your data access uh, problem. So plus, it's also not that low risk because you're changing environments and it's still very expensive because you're going to have to repurchase everything. Yeah, it sounds like there's too many unknowns here, lots of risks, lots of time, lots of money, and uh, changing the source code and making all these adjustments, it'd be nice if we had a, a way to integrate this. Yeah, and I guess this is really the important message here. Would, would, don't think about throwing it all away. Don't think about just trying to quickly, a quick solution over there, like just porting, for example. Uh, think about getting your COBOL environment integrated with the rest of your systems. And I think right now, most of the existing systems already talk to each other. There are all kinds of different approaches for that, like microservices are, being, are becoming more and more popular. Um, but there are application integration tools that allow you to, ha to have applications talk to each other. The challenge here is that COBOL sits there alone in the corner and the data is not, is not easily accessible even through those tools. But when you think about what happens if I'm able to integrate those applications, those, those COBOL uh, data files that you have, can you integrate that with all the other environments? This problem goes away, especially for real-time analytics. Hmm? In the first two days, we showed different different methods and modernizing the application thing. And today, we're focused on accessing that real live, real time data and what to do with it. But for for the audience's review, let's look at the traditional COBOL architecture and how C3RTG fits into it. We've mentioned ISAM. You talked about ISAM and the importance of that with some of our customers. You know, Faircom's got a huge history with it, and and our huge history with COBOL. Can you describe a little more about how that yeah, works? Yeah, sure. So, so it also gives you some, some background of what you're going to see in the demo here in a minute, right? So it's important to understand how C3RTG works and why we why when you switch your focus from the language, COBOL language, to the COBOL data files, how that helps you a lot. Like you can see here, Joe, the diagram is showing you a typical COBOL environment, like COBOL application running. So usually you have your source code and then you have the COBOL runtime. COBOL Runtime is in charge to execute the programs, and then it's also through the COBOL Runtime that you do all the I.O. So the problem you see that uh, usually most of the COBOL systems, they have some kind of file system based on ISAM. Uh, and here's the trick, right? I think that's the secret sauce from C3RTG. We are also an ISAM database. So underneath the cover, when you, when you look into C3RTG, what we're doing is essentially managing files, uh, but managing in a very robust and reliable way, and then opening additional interfaces for you to interact with that. I list on the right there a few of the most common file systems that you find out there. It may or may not ring a bell with uh, with the audience here, but Vision is the most common one for Active COBOL. Um, CISM is the most common one underneath Microfocus and some other platforms. There are many out there, like for example, Btrieve. Uh, it doesn't really matter for us. What matters is that many COBOL runtimes allow you to have additional file systems. and and you may or may not have considered that, but if you if you look into how C3RTG is going to work in a minute here, we're going to show you, you're going to see how this can change completely the game. Okay, so let me show you how what we do. So you can see, Joe, essentially C3RTG is a complete data management uh, tool that not only allows you to manage your data files under COBOL in a native way, we develop the drivers for COBOL. So what happens here is that you don't have to touch the source code. The language stays the same, your program stays the same because the way you're, the COBOL runtime will interact with us is exactly the same it was interacting before with its original file system through our ISM uh, interfaces. So you're just managing the data files without making any changes to the source code. Exactly, that's exactly right. Through our drivers that were developed specifically for each one of those, of those runtimes that you have, uh, but then, because this is a full database, there, there are many additional benefits that come in the picture. One of them is that we bring SQL. 
to your data. So what that means is that this is not this is not converting your data to a relational database. We keep the data record oriented, so everything stays the same as it was on COBOL. But we bring on top of that data a layer that is our SQL server, which allows you to run SQL transactions to your to your COBOL records. Okay, so it's important to understand here that COBOL uh, COBOL stays the same while SQL is querying the same data that's available for COBOL, and it's all under transaction control. So we mentioned some of the references in the beginning, the customers we saw there in the beginning. Um, they're all, the, the way that they achieve high availability with their systems is because C3RTG is a transactional database. So that comes for free for you the moment you implement uh, user technology. Your existing file system is not transaction oriented. So that is a big problem. It's part of the, of the reasons why you have data corruption going on and on. We talked about that uh, a few days ago, right, Joe? Uh, we solved that, you know, because it's a, it's a complete, a uh, system that manages all your data. Uh, it's multi-threaded, so it's designed for scalability, and that is really important when you bring SQL, because there are some SQL alternatives out there that are, we call them flat ODBC solutions. What it means is that uh, there's just an ODBC driver that talks straight to the data files and tries to extract, convert on the fly of SQL to ISM. Um, they are okay for some very low volume scenarios, like when you just want to run a SQL query really quick. They are not designed for scalability, much less for a BI, like a real time analytics running. You want to run a super hypercube with very complex queries. You need a scalability for that. So we can handle that because our ODBC drivers and our SQL drivers, we're going we're to talk about a few of them here today, they all go through our transactional engine on the SQL side. So with, with all the multi-thread engine that we have behind the scenes, we can handle thousands of concurrent transactions coming from the SQL side, while other thousands of concurrent transactions are coming from the COBOL side simultaneously. So that's the beauty of this architecture. <clears throat> and information that's very valuable, which is one of the reasons why people are here today to see what we can do with the real-time analytics. But these, most of these companies have already invested in a BI tool right and they're not able to connect it yeah it works you can see from the slide here it works with any of the bi tools that are out there because the most of these bi tools that we have some sort of sql interface odbc jdbc adio.net we support all those interfaces today we're going to talk specifically about microstrategy uh we're working with them as a partners you know you're going to see an example here running a real a real bi microstrategy tool connecting into live cobalt data at the same time using one of our sql interfaces you just mentioned that you know people came are coming to us today for the the data mining and the BI tools. We spent day one and day two talking about different different aspects of it: high availability, disaster recovery, um, scalability, and kind of some of the kind of integration pieces like building Python apps and stuff like that. And obviously, I think one of the most important things that everyone has in common is lowering the TCO. Yes, and I guess like again, switch the focus from the language into the data. What does that mean? It means that by you, by using C3 RTG, you solve many many problems simultaneously of what you have with today with COBOL. Like Joe just mentioned, like you solve data corruption, you get hot backup available for you to to copy data from your from your uh, your backup your COBOL data files. You can restore, we guarantee restore. So there are many additional benefits in parallel here. Uh, and then you you bring additional interfaces, like you can develop in new languages, you can do additional integrations. Today, the focus is going to be on the SQL interface that we bring, we bring here, which is really very important. So it, honestly, from the technology point of view, it doesn't matter a lot because the moment you adopt C3RTG, all the benefits you see on the screen here are going to be are going to be improving your COBOL environment. Yeah. And we're not talking about it today. I think we were in day one, we reviewed the ops manager, we showed the replication piece. But part of that is kind of an integral piece. I know we'll talk a little bit about replication a little later, but be able to take that and query that data off the production line and, and keep that production going and use just use the replicated servers. That's a very good point. It's really interesting to see, like we had customers coming to us because they had problems with data loss, but then they just really love the fact that they have also SQL. We had customers coming to us because they have SQL access and they want to have like a Node.js application being developed. But then they learn about real-time replication and they decide to combine both things to have like SQL running one machine and then COBOL running another one. It, it helps in so many ways. And I think it really boils down to the total cost of ownership, how much that improves. And by these, a lot, a lot of these are all part of the C-Tree RTG solution and it's lowering the risks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've done a lot of talking. I'm gonna hand this off to Evaldo. He's the real deal, guys. I mean, he's going to show you this, and we definitely need a little more COBOL here. Well, now you raised the bar, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Let me switch over to the demo here. We definitely need more COBOL, right? So, so 
The demo is based on a, on, a, on a commercial application called Passport Business Solutions. It's from one of our partners, Passport. Um, we like to show it with our real COBOL application just to, to, so that you can connect better how the solution works. Um, it's a very quick demo here. You're gonna see how easy and simple it is to, to make one particular file available for, for to be used in queries under uh, a real-time analytical tool like MicroStrategy in this case. But I like to go through the steps so you can try to understand what would that mean in your in your own system in-house, you know, and try to make some parallels. It's fairly simple. It's not it's not complex. So bear with me for a minute here. Let me let me run really quick some uh, uh, bring up the application here if I can find my mouse here. Here we go. So. So first, remember, Joe, I mentioned to you that uh, we are essentially uh, an additional file system under COBOL, right? So this, we can see this here um, in this environment. This is an active COBOL application. So I'm just gonna run, um, run COBOL really quick, telling me some information on the environment. You can see that by default, it comes with a vision file system. So that is by default. And usually every COBOL environment has some ways, some ways for you to tell which file system. I encourage the audience to go and check in your own system, which file system you're using, if you don't know yet. Sometimes it's not obvious, okay? Which, by the way, we work with them all. Yes, exactly, yeah. And you can see here that we, we what we did here essentially was adding C3RTG as an additional file system. So um, at this point here, Vision usually comes only with one. For this environment, we added a C3RTG as an extra one. This is really critical to understand that we don't force you to give up on Vision. What, means, what it means is that uh, you don't have to convert all your files to C3RTG. You can put only the files that you want to have, SQL access, for example, you know, and leave all the rest under vision. Usually, I can share with you that most of our customers end up converting everything just because it makes a lot of sense. Uh, but for the demo here, we're going to focus on a single file, okay, just for the sake of time. I'm going to show how that works. Let's take a look at the application itself. So uh, I mentioned it's called PBS, right? Uh, so it's a COBOL application character oriented. Um, I know that more, many applications out there are already uh, uh, web-based, uh, so there's some kind of web interface on top of it. A little Y2K <laughs> message there, right? We love it. Uh, 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 we just would like to show it as character because usually character, we run anywhere. It doesn't really matter, you know, for us to kind of, call it. as long as you have a role, uh, COBOL runtime, that's dealing with some file system, we can probably- uh, And given the time for the webinar, this is one of the best ways for us to show them how to yeah. do it. Yeah, uh -huh. and it works with the worst case, right? So it works with anywhere. So you can see it's an ERP, so there's accounts payable up here, accounts receivable and so on, many different modules. Um, you can see like it's menu oriented, so you can browse around here just with the arrows. And the file we're gonna talk about is the vendor file. So it's just essentially a record, a table containing a bunch of fake vendors, right? This is a fake company, zero, zero, so just for, for the sake of the demo. Just a typical COBOL application like you, probably, you guys probably run every day uh, hundreds of times, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this application and, and take the vendor file you see here on the screen and convert that vendor file to be managed under C3RTG, okay? So- Show us the magic. Yeah, so let me get out of this here. Um, so the way this works is essentially by, by taking the file of NPL00 and making it become a C3RTG file. So let me show you this. this. I mentioned this is a typical COBOL application, right? So like most of the COBOL applications, it's file oriented so, and folder oriented. So this was accounts payable. So you can see all the files related to accounts payable module are under AP00 for the fake company 00, right? And the file we're talking about is right here, Venfield 00, okay? So I'm gonna highlight two files. I'm gonna convert this file here. I have another file already converted, venhis00. I like to convert this file in advance here. I'm gonna show you in a minute what, what it means, but uh, it's already pre-converted. So when I switch over to show you the files, you're gonna see it's already there, okay? The conversion will be happen on top of venfuel00.dat. Um, you see, it's uh, the COBOL is very uh, file oriented, and for us, we respect that structure. So C3RTG is also file oriented. What that means is that once you convert this file, uh, if you want to keep venfuel 00dat as a C3 file, you can. You know, if you want to keep it under AP under the folder AP00, you can. If you want to take it out and put it in a different place, a different disk volume, we allow you to do all that. So we respect this structure, which is really important so you don't have to change anything on your on your COBOL logic, right? So the COBOL application will try to open Venfuel 00. Well, it still will do it with us and we will we respect it in the same way, right? So being, being a, a, a vision environment, uh, you can see also, it also, these files also have indexes. So the VIX in this case, um, it, it changes depending on the COBOL environment you are. For vision, these are external files. Um, what I'd like to highlight here is that we import all 
uh, all the indexes that you have in COBOL, we respect them as well. So when we bring this as a file under C3O2G, the same indexes you had in COBOL, you're gonna have under C3O2G as well. Really critical to make sure we preserve your performance, right? Because we know you're probably happy with how fast COBOL can do I.O. All right. So let's see how we convert this file, okay? Let's see it. Yeah, so the way to do this is a few steps. Uh, the, the very first step here, let me just clear the screen here so we, everybody can see it better, clear. So the very first step here is, um, let's extract the data from the existing file, then field 00, and let's drop it into like an external file, a dump file, okay? okay. We do it using a vision utility called, called VUTU with the dash unload option. Um, this is from this is because it's like a COBOL, depending on where, which environment you are, there are different utilities. We know all of them, we can help you if you're not familiar with this step here, but essentially I just extracted the information record by record and dropped it into a dump file, okay? So I wanna convert this file, so I wanna make sure I don't have the old file here anymore. Let me take the existing file and move it to a backup. So essentially just copy the copy the dot that file into a backup file, okay? Just taking it out of our way, right? So at this point, there is no vinfuel 00.dat anymore. And let me show this how this is not just slideware or clickbait like Joe mentioned before. If I go back to the application, you're gonna see that if I go back here and try to now browse vendors, I got an error. Okay, System this, down panic. Yeah, the file is not there anymore, right? We remove the file. At this point, the, the reason why you got the error is because we, we did not, we extracted the data, but we, not, we did not create a new file for C3RTG. So let's do that, okay? So, how do you do this? Um, well, the first first step that you have to do is to create a file under C3RTG with the same file schema that you had for original one, right? So when field zero, zero. We're gonna do this using our own utility called CTUTIL. Okay, CTUTIL with the dash make option, it's very inspired in all COBOL environments we have seen out there. So this is a very complex tool, has a bunch of different features, I can show in a minute here. But essentially in this step here, what I'm doing is I'm creating a new Vinfield 00, zero empty, and I'm using the external file descriptor as a way to extract the scheme of the file. Okay, there are many ways to do this. In this particular case, we're gonna use the external file descriptor. If you're not familiar with the concept of an XFD, uh, I encourage you to talk to us, we can explain it to you. You know, you don't have to have the XFD to do this. Uh, but it's just a simpler way to do. So at this point, I have an empty venfuel 00dat file, okay? So it's still not good for me to, to go back to the application because I need to do one more step. Let's import all the data that I had dumped into venfuel 00dmp Let me bring this up to venfuel 00 right? And using CTUT again, with the dash load option this time, right? So just load this file. And you can see here, we loaded 216 records, right? So just bring this up into C3. So now at this point, I have a venfuel 00.dat file that has been converted to C3. But if I go back to the application, it's not gonna work yet. So the data, the data is being managed by C3 now, yes. right? Uh -huh. But but it doesn't know where it is, right? That's exactly right, yeah. So we how have, do we go in and redirect if it? If you remember from the beginning, the, the runtime knows that there are two file systems. So you have to tell the runtime which file system to use and in the case of Akikobo, you can tell it per file. So you can tell it for one particular file, I want you to use uh, C3RTG. So we want to tell the runtime that for Venfuel 00, I want you to use C3. In this case, the way to do it is by setting up an environment variable with the name of the file, underline host, and just setting up a C3. Okay? It's a very simple step, but just by doing this here, at this point, your application now is still, it's, it's gonna be back. I'm gonna show you in a minute here, it's gonna be running. But Venfuel 00 now is being managed by C3. Right? And for the purposes of being clear as part of the demo, we're doing one file here, but they can take a phasal approach. They can move all their data over and be managed by C3, which is what we prefer because then you take, take advantage of the complete solution and features that come with it, or but they can move partially over. That is very important, Joe, because th this solution, C3RTG, is really designed to help you. Uh, to preserve the investment you have in COBOL. So we don't force you to move everything. You can have C3RTG running and convert slowly your files under C3RTG, keep everything the way it was before, and slowly bring them to C3RTG until you're comfortable enough to have everything being managed over here. So it's really very flexible. It's not about change, it's about evolving. Exactly, yes. So if I go back here to the application and now hit in vendors here, you can see it's it's working again, but now it's actually querying a C3RTG file and then field zero zero. So you can see how this, uh, how simple it was to go through the steps, right? So at this point, the, your application is back running. C3RTG is already managing Venfield 00, but it's not ready yet for you to have real-time access through SQL. There is one final step that we need to do here. It's a Faircom magic sauce. It is a Faircom magic verb, I would say. <laughs> we, we came up with a new concept called 
to SQLize your COBOL data files, okay? Um, if you remember from the, from the initial presentations on the slides, we mentioned that C3RTG is a complete ISM database, but at the same time, it's also a SQL database. So we developed, we developed a solution that maps dynamically all your ISM COBOL data files into SQL tables uh, on the fly and under the transaction control. So that brings uh, a tremendous uh, flexibility for your environment. The very first one is that we can take any of the files that you have, uh, as long as you have the file scheme available, we can make it available for SQL for you. Um, so what you have to do is to use our utility CTUTU, but now with the dash SQLize option, right? So it's kind of a funny term here that we that <laughs> recommend. Yeah, we like to SQLize. We like, we like to SQLize COBOL tables. So SQLizers. SQLizers, yes. Huh? So what you have to do is essentially run uh, CTUTU dash SQLize, okay, with info 00. I'm not gonna use the rules here in this case, we don't need them. So, and, but now I do need the external file descriptor for that, okay? So at this, this is a step, this is the only step where XFTs are required. Um, if you don't have them, there are many ways to extract them. We offer tools to generate the XFTs for you as well. In many cases, the COBOL runtime has the tools by themselves. So let me just run this really quick and you can see I just SQLized the data over here, right? So before I show you what happened here, let me go back to the, to the application. I wanna keep it logged in here so you can see this works in conjunction with, uh, with COBOL, so the application is up and running here, so you can come over here, hit vendors, and you can see I'm browsing the data, right? So COBOL application is up and running, but now let me switch over to our additional interface here, this here. Uh, so now let me just make sure the connection is live here, let me reconnect. So this is our, what we call our SQL Explorer, okay? So this is the interface that gives you control on our SQL server that is managing all the files that are under C3RTG, uh, so including Ventfield 00. Um, you can see it's a client server solution. That's really important. Uh, C3RTG is a client server solution. So that means that you can take your COBOL application and have your COBOL data files sitting in a different place, you know, and having C3RTG managing that remotely. You don't have to keep everything in the same place anymore. Uh, Remember, it's not about villainizing the data at this point. Like we're really opening this up. Exactly, yes. And, and, and because we bring SQL here, you can see that this is a full SQL server. It's our SQL server. It's really important to understand we're not duplicating the data. We're just have, we just have our own SQL server mapping dynamically your COBOL tables into SQL. That's it's, a great point because it's not modularized here. Like no. it's one complete solution. Exactly, yes. Just but with those steps that you just saw over there, now you have a full SQL server managing your data. Like. And we, have, we support store procedures, we support triggers, you know, we have views, you're gonna see a view operating in a minute here. But most important, we have the tables here, and you can see right here is Vinfield 00, right? So that's the table that we just sequelized. You can see all the fields over here. This came from, uh, from your mapping on COBOL. Um, we give all the typings here. We have a, a, an internal uh, API that maps COBOL data types to SQL data types, and this can be done by you, so you can map it properly. We support all the way to dates, for example, like really important, see like for example, COBOL does not support a date type, right? It's only characters. Right. Well, we on SQL, you can tell our SQL server that this particular field in COBOL, which might look like a big X of, of four in this case, or a big X of six, it's just a string. But for us, you can tell us, I want you on the SQL side to show it as a date. We will do this transformation for you on the fly. And if I click here on table records, you're gonna see that here you go, here's the table, the, the, the COBOL file, okay, table that's seen as a SQL, as a SQL table. Okay. And now I can run any SQL instruction, like if I come over here, like I can do like, let me type here and select vent name, vent number from Ventfield 00, for example, and just hit execute here. You're gonna see that, oops, hold on, I think there's an extra. Let me just do this here, see if this is gonna be right. See, there we go. just run a run a SQL query over here. Now I'm running, I'm, I can see, I can query in real time the COBOL data just by running SQL instructions. And to show this is not just fake information, let me go back to the application here. Let's say, what happens if someone comes on the SQL side, uh, for example, from the application here and just update some, some record here. In this case, change the vendor name of this, of this particular record here. If I go back to the COBOL application running behind here, remember it was still running here, right? So if I come back to vendors and I start to browse the record, you can see that it changed over here. Doesn't get more real-time access than that. No, it's completely real-time. And just and this SQL server provides you many, many different interfaces to interact with the data. Uh, basic ones are ODBC, JDBC, but also ADO.NET, you know, and there are many, many different other ways to do it. 
the, what we're going to show here now is how can you query? So what can you do with this data? Yeah. Right. So what else you can do? So I mentioned that we have uh, we have uh, different interfaces. One of them is ODBC. But the one I'm going to use now is just using the ODBC driver. Let me bring up an Excel spreadsheet here. And I'll bring it over here. Uh, so you can see like just a typical interface on Excel. But now because I have my ODBC driver connected behind the scenes, I can come here in, in, in Excel and import some data coming from an ODBC driver. Like in this case, for example, you're going to see here, here is our ODBC driver, right? There are some others here. We want to look into this one. Again, all part of the package, okay? You get the driver as part of the solution. You can install it in any, any machine you want. I'm just going to hit enter. You can see all the files over here. So if I click on VinField00, I'm going to bring VinField00 here on Excel in a, just a few clicks. Okay? And I can just click OK here. And you're going to see the VinField00. Uh, it's bringing up. There you go. See? So now you have in real-time access here. You can see on Excel, I'm just reading the data directly from uh, from our SQL Explorer. It's impressive. Yeah, to make it really cool, let me go come back over here. What happens if I if I change this guy here back to Wordify, for example? Do you think it'll change it again? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> the demo bots on our side here. <laughs> I believe it will change. So let me go back to Excel. You might say, oh, it didn't change. Well, Excel is not online, right? So right. you have to hit refresh here. So if I just hit refresh here on, on, the, on this table here, it's gonna see it updated already. So at this point, any reports you have on Excel where you're usually trying to extract data from your application, put in some file, convert into CSV, import into Excel, you don't have to do any of that anymore. No, just have it straight there. Uh, and I know people think, oh my gosh, that's so easy. You guys prepare this for the demo and the webinars and you guys do this all the time. But this is something, if they contact us, if you reach out to us, this is something we can do with your data. Yes. And we can show you one-on-one -on -one how to do this with yours. So it's not only that it works in our environment, it can work in your environment too. Yeah, and then because of the power of our SQL Server, I mentioned to you that it supports store procedures, for example, and support views. Let me show a view. So I have a view pre-constructor pre here called invoices. This view is doing a join between uh, between these two files here, VenField00 and VenHist04. By the way, I did not mention VenHist04, right? It's interesting to notice that there are two SQL tables here. While if you remember, VenHist00 was a single data file on COBOL. Um, what happens here, Joe, is that when his 00 has a redefine inside it, so there are two different record types inside the COBOL file. It's a very common situation for COBOL that creates a lot of headaches when you try to convert that into relational databases. For us, it's absolutely transparent. We just detect the redefines, and what we do is for COBOL, we keep the data as a single data file, but for SQL, we show it as two different SQL tables. So this here is showing one type of record, this table here is showing another type of record within the single COBOL file. So we do it all on the fly. You don't have to worry about any of that, okay? And the invoice I'm gonna show you here, it's actually a join query between VenField00 and VenHistField00, just listing a bunch of a bunch of uh, orders from one particular vendor. So if I run the view, you can see here the, the, the SQL query. So now I'm collecting some data from, uh, from the VenField file here and I'm collecting some data from the VenHist file. So I'm doing a join between two SQL, two COBOL tables on the fly using a, a SQL query. It's actually a view, so it's it's run in real time. And we're gonna use this view here. Now we're gonna switch over to the BI tool, right? Yeah, I would say you already proved a lot, but these guys came to see the, the yeah, microstrategy so, part of this. So what else you can do, right? So at this <laughs> point here, this particular implementation, now it's ready to be integrated with any environment. We're gonna show you uh, how how to do that with MicroStrategy? Okay, I mentioned MicroStrategy. One of our we're working with them as a partner. Um, so we're using their tool here. It's just it works with any tool, but it's really cool to see how it works with MicroStrategy. I'm just gonna go over here, creating a new dossier, what we call a dossier. Let me bring up it over here. So you can see like this in this interface on MicroStrategy, the way we're gonna do it by it's by adding additional data interface. So just come over here and add new data. They provide you multiple different sources, inputs for data. So you can see it goes to Google Analytics. You can collect data from Twitter. The one we want here is a database. And this is really interesting because at this point, yes, your data files are being managed under a database, right? The ones that you convert. So I can click over here. They offer some options here, like for example, build a query or type a SQL query. I'll do it like manually, select some tables. I can click, just click on next. And the data source I'm using here is ODBC. It could be JDBC, it could be other interfaces. If you're running this in a Linux environment, for example, or if you wanna have a full Java solution, any of our traditional SQL interfaces are available. For this case here, it's just our ODBC driver. So if I click on the driver, 
you're going to see it's loading over there. Let me click over here and you can see it lo it's loading all the tables. I have to refresh here because the Infuse is not showing there. Let me refresh this guy. It's going to connect. And there you go. Here's the table. Here's the view. Here are those additional tables. It shows everything as if it were tables because that's how it looks like. Right. It's quite interesting. Views are handled as tables by tools like this. So you can you see how complex this can be and how sophisticated this can turn now. You can build joins between your COBOL tables, call them views, and they will be seen by tools like, like MicroStrategy as if they were separate tables. Let's let's pick this one here. Like let's use uh, invoices as the table we're gonna do. So just finish this here. I want to show some cool reports you can extract. So let me import this data. So it's preparing the data and bring and now it's running the view. In the, in the background, uh, you're going to see the view here in a minute. So here's the view. Okay, so the invoices is right there with its fields. If you remember, like here, let me then go back to SQL Explorer. If I click on the views here, you're going to see how, like, this is the, this is the, I'm sorry, click on the view. These are the fields that the view has, right? They're coming from, the, from two different tables. They are just right here. So now from, from MicroStrategy, it gives you all the different reports and visualizations that you can imagine, right? Once so you pop one up in there. Yeah, let's pick, for example, state over here. You see, like it's showing all the states here. Or now total amount of sales. Okay, let me drop total amount of sales. Here you go. So total amount of sales is, is just adding all the sales from that particular case. I want to, oh, it's showing just numbers. I want to show this as this is actually money, right? So I want to show this as currency. Uh, let me click on currency here and just click OK. See, it's showing as currency. but I don't like this visualization. Now in real time here, I can just come over here and change visualization. I want to do spatial service because there are states over here. And boom, now you have here a full live report, real time report running on your COBOL data files. In this case, using MicroStrategy. But you can imagine, Joe, any decision maker could have this tool at the tip of his fingers. You no, know, you don't have to come over here and, and ask someone to write a COBOL program that extracts all the data, put in some plates. It's going to take you hundreds of hours to write in code. I was going to say, by the time they write the code, the data is already obsolete. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. They're, yes. And their competitors have moved on. The value in this is huge. So I think uh, we've seen a lot of our customers either not have access to this data or not, more importantly, have access in a timely manner. Exactly, exactly. So at this point, you can see, you can play with the visualization you have here because it's all running in real time. Off that data, and I can I can pick any any table I want. For example, if I want to see if it feels zero zero, I could. Let's take this guy off here, and let's for example, let me delete this visualization. Let's say I want to see if it feels zero zero. You know, I can I can load it over here. Let me see where's my right here, right? So I can take. Oh, I have to do a visualization, right? Let's drop this guy over here. Oh, let's get it. I have to change it to you. Let me add it over here. New data. Go back and load it again. So this gives you everything that's available over there on SQL. You can you can come over here and create visualizations in real time using uh, your particular BI tool, right? Right, and that's I think that's a critical fact. Again, we bring up multiple times. I know it sounds redundant. We're not forcing them down to use a particular thing. No, and this is all across the C Tree RTG solution. And I know most of your companies have already invested in BI tools. So we're not telling you to go get a different one, but utilize the stuff you have. Yeah, exactly. And I think the, w the way what we just did here will work right away off the box in your own environment, right? With whatever tool you have, because we are we, we support all the all the different uh, LDBC interfaces and SQL interfaces that can, and, you can. Manage. And they'll be able to do that with any of the files that they allow C Tree RTG to manage. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's the demo, Joe. So I, I hope it was interesting. <laughs> I think it was great. I think you. I think it was a good pur purpose for today was real-time data and like some what to do with that data. I think you delivered some more COBOL for us. Oh, good. <laughs> you we know, need more COBOL. <laughs> we do need more COBOL. I think one of the things we talked about was the real-time replication. You know, we talked about the value of not affecting your production system and and how we're not limiting that either. We, we can do a failover or GR situation, but it also can be used for reporting tools. Yeah, real-time replication is an interesting combination when you think about real-time analytics with your data. So what would happen is that we have seen many customers where because they now they have SQL access to the COBOL data, it, it really explodes, right? In terms of the capacity of what you can do and all, and they start to play with SQL and all over the place. SQL, when you run SQL queries, it's quite different than running COBOL applications. COBOL applications are more IO oriented. So what you need is fast disk, you know, and guarantee that IO happens. SQL are more CPU slash memory oriented. So what we have seen is that many of our customers, they end up combining the SQL uh, capability with real-time replication. So 
instead of running the hypercube you saw i was running here behind the scenes when i was, it was loading the data right so you could be concerned about well but wait a minute do i really want my my bi tool going straight to the COBOL data when all the users are using the system it's a mission critical environment well you don't have to you can combine with real-time replication it's a transactional database so we allow you to have replicas of the main database so you can have your COBOL application running in one server have a real-time replica and separate here and point your BI tool to the replica. So you can do all kinds of crazy SQL queries you wanna do over here. It's not gonna impact your COBOL data files and it's gonna be done on top of real-time data, right? So it's very powerful and that's why we have the slide here to show a little bit about this. Right? And again, all included in the in the solution. All well, parts of RTG, yeah. Yeah, we know there's lots of limitations with COBOL as far as speed and security and reliability. You know, one of the things that the package come to, again, no changes to the source code. Yep. It's a transactional database. Mm -hmm. You know, there's security features. There's lots of advantages here. Yeah, this list kind of summarizes the additional benefits that you would have by using C3RTG. Remember, it's a full transactional database, right? So that, that means a lot. It protects your data. It was designed to protect your data. It was designed with reliability and availability in the, in the mind. All those big companies you saw over there, they all take advantage of all these features, like for example, security. Um, I've seen many of our co customers today with COBOL, when, I, when we walk in with C3RTG, the data is usually exposed in data files that anyone, if they wanna see the data, they could probably do it. Um, well, we can encrypt the data with us. We have encryption, you know, you can encrypt communication. We have SSL and TLS. Right? Encrypt the data at rest. You can, I mean, we're a full blown database. Exactly, yeah. So this is just, the, it's just to make sure to understand, this is not only about bringing SQL to COBOL, like I said, there are many flat solutions out there that do not deliver scalability, do not give you all those benefits. C3RTG, if you see, if you come to us because you see like I want real-time data access to my COBOL data, you're gonna have it in the best performance possible available out there, but you're also gonna get a lot of additional benefits. You know, we, we, don't, we, see, we don't say no to very much. We say no changes to source code, and if you're not in the mainframe, we support it. Yes. Uh -huh. So we talked a little bit earlier, you mentioned you went through the different AccuCobol, and all the systems, we have great partners in Variant, and we've, we've after being around for 40 years, we've seen and done it almost all. Yes, here's a list of all the, the, the ones that we support right now. It's, it's, a, it's a, This is just a summary, there are way more than this. Um, Variant is on the top of the list here. Variant, you mentioned, Joe, is one of our partners from the beginning. They have a very cool solution called IS COBOL that allows you to take your COBOL application, convert them to Java, and use C3RTG as the OEM file system. So C3RTG is, is the file system under Variant. But we run with AcuCobo, like I just showed here before, and uh, all different versions. We have customers in all over the place. We run with MicroFocus. MicroFocus is one of our partners as well. Uh, and you can see we run all the way back to MicroFocus 3.0, which is like from the 80s, all the yeah. way to Visual Cobo, the latest and greatest. Well, as people modernize their, their OSs, and they, you know, we talked about lowering the total cost of ownership, where talk about some of the cost savings about just moving your data. Yeah, you could. Like we had customers coming to c 3 rtg because they were trying to, to they were having troubles with uh, older platforms like SCO, for example. Uh, and they realized that uh, if they wanted to move to Linux first, they would have to repurchase some of the COBOL runtimes, which was really very expensive. And they could not buy parts, pieces and parts for the machine that they were there anymore. So it was becoming a big, big, a major, major bottleneck for their solution. So they adopted C3RTG to, to remove all the I.O. from this old machine and put it in a modern machine, like a Linux machine. So C3RTG is client server. So what that means is that they could separate and keep COBOL running in their old SEO, but all the I.O. was now being managed by a Linux machine running C3RTG. That bought them uh, decades of time because they don't have to worry about anymore running out of, of capacity of memory on the machine because the majority of the processing on COBOL happens on I.O. actually. So yeah, it's one way to go, for example. And it made the manager a hero as far as coming under budget. It did, yes. Uh -huh. You know, and, and just a little more, one more reiteration on that. Just contact us. If you think your situation's unique or you're running an older system, we actually prefer older at some point. Yeah, it doesn't matter for us. Yeah, we really like it. <laughs> and we're platform agnostic. So yeah. as long as you're not in the mainframe, come and check us out. You know, we've we've talked a lot today. I wanted to give a great demonstration, but here's kind of a summary slide of the whole C3 RTG package. You know, keeping the low, low TCO, high availability features, disaster recovery, basically keeping up with modern business continuity plans yeah. for the COBOL architecture. Yeah, you see, like, this is a good summary of, of, of the benefits that you, that you get by adopting C3RTG. The demo hopefully showed you how easy it is 
uh, of course, in real real uh, world environments, you you're gonna have some additional things to consider, like your scripts. You know, don't worry, talk to us. You know, we have we have experience in helping customers to go live and do the conversion and get the benefits that you see here. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed it today. Of all though, I thought did a great job on the demonstration. Nice work there, um, and you really showcased this stuff with our great partner, MicroStrategy. Um, but now it's time to get to the free stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this is really cool. At the end of this. We're going to hand it off to Jeff, and he's going to talk to you guys about one final thing. And then um, when he ends the uh, webinar, you're going to get a short survey. Fill it out. Let us know how we did, what you'd like to see on future webinars. And everyone who submits one of these completed surveys gets this cool free Dino t-shirt. Yeah, let's make Kobo turn into a beast, right? We like to, like Joe was saying, we, we like Kobo. You know, we think Kobo is very powerful. We are here to help you protect and protect the investment you have done in Kobo along the years and bring it to new heights. That's why we have the the little dino hole in the ice axe over there. <laughs> That's a great shirt. Um, and for those of you that missed day one or day two, I believe they're up on our YouTube channel. And here's a list of our, um, our all of our webinars. And all the links to all the webinars will also be located in the chat box. Well, we really appreciate it today. I know that here's some of the really cool fair, free stuff. Go to faircom.com slash RTG and get your free evaluation copy of the software. Download it, give us a call at 1-800-234-8180, and then email myself or Evaldo. What we'll basically do is we'll get on with you and we'll work with the engineer, your engineers and our engineers, and we'll do something very similar to what we did today in the demonstration, possibly even a little further, show you that we can do it in your environment. So all that included for a limited time, when you reach out to us, we're gonna do a free proof of concept. Yeah, and proof of, we like proof of concepts. I think it's really important. You saw the demo here with our own application, like Joe said. We are here to help you to see it working with your own environment, you know, so talk to us. We believe that we can do it and we just like the proofs in the pudding for your particular environment. So again, reach out to us. Valdo, it's been a pleasure three days. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Jeff, I'm gonna kick it back over to you. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Before we close out, I do have a couple of great questions which we would like to share with everyone. Uh, Evaldo, I think this one's kind of in your alley. Uh, basically, how can you understand my data schema, which is usually proprietary, and I typically have special data types. How can you guys understand that? Yeah, sure. So there are a few components here, and uh, I think it's a very good question. So first is really the, the the file descriptor that's coming from COBOL. Okay, so the data schema from from your file from your COBOL data is sitting in the FD and the select. So it's a combination that's sitting in your source code. Um, we can go straight to that COBOL COBOL description and extract it from there. Or we can generate an external XML that you saw during the demo called XFD. Okay, we have tools for both of them. But behind the scenes, what's going on here is really we have a secret sauce, which is the data type API that I mentioned during the demo. So we are able to map all your COBOL data types from the from your from your file descriptor into SQL types, and then. That is really the magic that goes behind the scenes when we convert the XFD into a mapping on the SQL side. So the, the, I think the, the short answer is we can go straight to the, to, the, the, to the source code if you have, or we can use the external file descriptor. They both have the information we need to be able to do the mapping for the SQL because we use our data type API behind the scenes. All right, thank you so much. And Joe, I think this one's kind of for you. Um, do you do you or we offer any professional services to help my small COBOL team with RTG? Definitely, Jeff, that's a great question. We have teams of engineers here ready to work with you guys one-on-one -on -one to figure out that the environment's right for you. Remember, RTG is a complete solution, so we have lots of features and availability and we can expedite the time it takes to showcase all those features in your particular environment. So it doesn't matter what version of Cobol you're running, give us a call, reach out to Evaldo or myself, and we'll get, you, we'll get you going. Yeah. All right, well done guys. Thanks for sharing all the great information with us. And I want to thank each of you for joining us. We hope that you found it was time well spent. Valuable links and contact information are listed on the slide within the presentation window for your convenience. If you missed out on day one and two, where we talked about eliminating data corruption and then modernizing COBOL applications, all the webinars in this series are available to watch on demand at the link provided in the chat window. Also, please feel free to reach out directly to Evaldo and Joe if you have any direct questions for them. Their emails are right there. They'd love to hear from you. And also, and lastly, in order to receive your Dino COBOL shirt, please fill out the survey at the close of this session. When I close out the webinar, a pop-up window will show up, and when it does, please click on the close button to immediately receive the survey.
Thanks again. Hope to see you next time. Signing off, Evaldo, Joe, and Jeff. Thank you. See Thank you. you.